Hey everybody, Mr. Jones here, and we are still continuing on with quadratics, but now we are moving on to a topic called quadratic regression. And this is a fancy way of saying like almost like a scatter plot, if you remember those from Algebra 1. Um, in Algebra 1, you would have looked at um, linear regression or a line of best fit, and now we're going to be looking at quadratic regression or a curve of best fit. Um, and I'll explain all of what that means, but this is going to be all done in Desmos. Okay, so we're going to jump into Desmos right now. All right, back in Desmos, and we are going to be doing some quadratic regression. Okay, now I want you to notice first this quadratic regression equation that you might notice here. Really complicated. It looks crazy. This is really only for Desmos. Okay, this equation is just for, that you would type into Desmos, and that's Desmos's way of knowing to give you the um, quadratic equation, okay? So we'll go over that in a little bit, okay? Just, I wanna do some of these problems here first, okay? So this first one says, a parabola contains the points 0, 0, negative 1, negative 2, and 1, 6. What is the equation of this parabola in standard form? Okay, so we're given the situation where we have these three points, okay? And we're told that this parabola passes through those three points, okay? And so we're asked to find the equation of that. And so the easiest thing that we can do is put those points into Desmos, okay? And we're going to do it. It's given to us in ordered pairs, but we're going to put it in, into a table, okay? Very similar, right? So that first point, x value 0, the y value 0, okay? So that's my first point, and you see the purple point shows up right there. Second point, negative 1, comma, negative 2, okay? Second point shows up, and then the third point, 1, comma, 6, the third point shows up up there, okay? So we're given this, uh, this th these three points. Again, it's definitely not a full curve, but we can kind of see that this would be maybe like the right side of a curve, right? We can kind of see it has that curvature to it. And so we're asked to find the equation of this parabola, okay? So the first thing we do always is going to be to tell Desmos what points are contained within there, and then we need to type in this big, crazy quadratic regression equation, okay? And so we just type it in. I give it this. I give this to all my students every year. This is exactly how you would type it in, and with the numbers, with those number ones in it. Okay. So y one. Okay. And you're going to type in the number one normally. Okay. But it's going to make it that smaller um, text. Okay. And that's okay. You want it to be like that. Okay. Because. And you see the x's have those with it as well. You see, look at your table. Your table says x1 and y1, or it should. Um, and so that, and, and we, so we want it to match, we want the equation to match up with the table. Okay, so that's why we put the ones in there. So y1, squiggly sign, I call it, or that's approximately. You can find that symbol uh, if you type your alphabet keyboard and write under the letter B and N right here. Okay, that's the approximately sign because we are approximating what the equation is going to be. It's not always exact because sometimes we're given like a scatter plot type thing. Okay, so y1 squiggly, ax1 squared. Okay, so we go back here, squared. Okay, and so you see the 1 is small, but the 2 is that exponent. Okay, and that's what we want. Okay, now you notice it's not quite through all my points yet because that's I have more to type in, plus bx1 plus C. Okay, so what we have, we have our parabola showing, and we have this, and we have all these numbers showing down here, right? And again, with a quadratic, the standard form of a quadratic, I'm going to type it into the side, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, right? That's the standard form of a quadratic, with these a, b, and c values being numbers, okay? And you notice, it gives these statistics, and we're not worried about the residuals and all that. But these a, b, and c values are really valuable to me, okay? So a equals 2, b equals 4, c equals, I'm, I'm going to say this is 0, okay? I'm going to say, because 10 to the negative 32nd, what that would mean is I move this decimal place over to the left 32 times, meaning there's 32 zeros, so it would be 0 0.0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 32 times, and then this, so basically zero for our purposes. And so my equation, right, with these values would for this problem would be y equals 2x squared, 2x squared plus 4x, you could say plus zero, or you could just drop that c value off because zero doesn't really change it. 
So this would be my final answer. Okay, that would be the equation of this parabola. Okay, so that's the process of, of writing that given a set of points. Okay, now we're going to skip over number two and just look at number three, and then we're going to look at this uh, real life problem. Okay, so number three says a player throws a basketball toward the hoop. Notice it doesn't shoot it, so this person's probably not very good at basketball. Just chucks it up there, throws it. Uh, the basketball follows a parabolic path through the points 2, 10, 4, 12, and 10, 12. If the center of the hoop is at 12, 10, will the bass pass through the hoop? That should definitely say ball, not bass, so sorry about that. Um, okay, so again, same scenario. We're given three points, okay, so we need to go plus, table, and we are going to type those three ordered pairs into the table. So 4, 2, 10, 4, 12, and 10, 12. Now the three points aren't showing up because I can't fit. Well, if I zoom in, there we go. Okay, so now that my three points are showing, okay, and so those are there, and again, it's asking me this question, okay, if the center of the hoop is at 12, 10, will the bass pass through the hoop? Ha. Will the ball pass through the hoop? Um, again, to be able to figure this out, I need to type in this quadratic regression equation. Let me move it down so we can see it down here. Okay, so I'm going to type that in again, y1. Okay, so there is my whole equation, and okay, you see that the red line goes through my points, okay. Okay, and I'm given these a, b, and c values, right, so my equation, I would know my equation from this, okay. But when I'm looking at it here in Desmos, okay, Will the ball pass through the hoop at 12, 10? Okay. You might look first at the vertex, okay? But this is saying, okay, at like 7 feet, okay? Well, I guess we don't know that it's feet, but um, when x is 7, y is 13.125. Okay, so, but what it's wondering, will it pass through 12, 10? And if we see the, I'm going to scroll through as close as I can. 12 comma 10, yes, that is right on my curve there. You see that? 12 comma 10. So I can confidently say, is the center of will the center of the hoop will will the ball pass through the center of the hoop? Yes, yes it will. So I know that, okay, uh, because my curve passes right through there. Um, and another way you could get that is if you got the quadratic regression equation, okay, kind of like this one is, and you plugged in 12 for x, you should get 10 as the answer. So that's another way that you could check to answer this question. But when you have Desmos and it can show it right to you, then that's a lot easier, right? So now looking at the last one, it doesn't even have a number with it, but we'll call it number five. Um, so this, it says a table shows the meteorologist predicted temperatures for an October day in Sacramento, California. And it doesn't give you any question or anything. So let's just pretend like it's saying find the quadratic regression equation about these, comparing these times and temperatures. Okay. So now there's an issue here, okay, with, with specifically those times, right? If I was to type in 8, 10, 12, 2, and 4, 6, that would not give me an accurate a uh, description of what's happening because, right, 12 is a bigger number than 2, but, right, 2 is later in the day. So how about instead I give the times as hours past uh, midnight or hours past, um, you could say, military time. So instead we could say 8, 10, 12, I know it's not matching up exactly, so 14, 16, 18, how's that? Shout out military time, people. Um, so these are my x values that I'm going to use, okay, and match up with these predicted temperatures, okay. So if I go into Desmos again and I put in my table, 8, let me just go down the line and type those in, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So that is hours past midnight, okay, and the predicted temperatures uh, would be 52, 64, 72, 78, 81 and 76. Okay, so you might be saying, where's your points? Well, you're not zoomed out enough because those numbers are bigger than the normal span of numbers that we see. But I zoom out a little bit. Whoa, look at that. I have a beginnings of a quadratic curve forming there. Okay, so again, if I'm trying to find the equation of this guy, I, again, I'm going to type in my quadratic 
regression equation. And you might be saying, uh-oh, this doesn't go through all your points. What's the deal? Um, that's happening because this, these points aren't exactly forming a parabola. Okay, Again, most real-life scenarios don't work out where they form the exact parabola. That's why quadratic regression is also called curve of best fit. Kind of like line of best fit, where like the points for, go into the pattern of a quadratic a parabola, but they're not exactly a parabola. And that's okay. We're just trying to get an approximation here. That's all quadratic regression is. It's an approximation. Okay. So again, if I'm trying to get the equation of this guy, I could write, I'm going to put in these values for A, B, and C. So it would be Y equals, and again, you, you, this, you use the standard form of a quadratic when you give the equation answer, but this equation right here is only what you type in to Desmos. That's its only purpose. Your answer should not, in, like your equation answer should not include these ones and the squiggly and all that. Okay, so this only purpose of this equation is for Desmos. Okay, so y equals negative 0 0.47, we'll round that, x squared plus 14.72x minus 36.1. One, two. So that would be the full equation of this guy, okay, representing this situation, all these temperatures at this time. So the, the, and that's normal, right? You, in the morning you wake up and it is not very warm at all, and then it gets warmer and then it gets cold at night. So basically that's what it's saying. And it's not exact, but it's, it's a way for us to model to model that exactly. So that's the dealio with quadratic regression. Um, hope that makes sense, and thanks for following. Bye-bye.